Psalm 139, 13 through 16 says, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when there was none yet. Today, I want to share with you two things, who God is and what he has done. God is sovereign. He is the creator and he is in control of all things on earth and in heaven. This passage in Psalm 139 says that God intricately knitted and wove us together in our mother's womb. But why would the God of all things desire to take time to be so intimately involved in creating you and me? Let's look at verse 16. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them. The days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none. When God created you and me, he already had a plan for us. He knew exactly who he wanted us to be and the life we were going to live. The Bible says right here that our days were formed even though there were no days yet. God is sovereign and he is in control. The other day, I went through my memory boxes. I grabbed a journal and sat down at my desk to write this message. And I was thinking about my story. I remembered I had another journal with an important part recorded in it. I went to my bookshelf, found the journal, laid it on the floor, and was flipping through the pages. And when I found the entry I needed, I saw in my mind a string. And this string was connecting all the different pieces of my story together. I thought about this string and then I was compelled to stop what I was doing and go and make this. I spent four hours intricately weaving each piece of yarn in order to make this final product. There are different colors of yarn, different textures, and different patterns throughout this piece. But out of all the patterns and colors and textures, there is one continuous piece of yarn that is holding it all together, and it's called the warp. The warp goes up and down, up and down the loom, and the other yarn is woven through the warp. The warp, a continuous string connecting all the different pieces of yarn together, make a beautiful tapestry. This is what God's sovereignty is like in our lives when he created us in our mother's womb. He had a plan for our lives. Each season of life we go through, he is sovereignly working, controlling, and putting things in place for his glory. In this tapestry, there are places where it's really hard to see the warp, but there are places where it's really easy to see the warp. Like right here in this white, I can see where the warp is and I can look closely and follow it all the way through the tapestry. It's the same with God's sovereignty in our lives. During some seasons, his sovereignty can easily be seen, but other seasons, it's very hard to see his sovereignty. When I was flipping through that journal, looking for that entry, I saw God's sovereignty that connected many, many seasons of my life all together. And I want us to follow the string of God's sovereignty through my story so that we can learn what God has done. Forever dearest in my heart, confusion had filled my mind while the swelling of this heart did scar my soul from such pain to give this precious love away, which I had carried, labored, and bore. Within myself I seem blind, but this darkness soon will fade. It is such emptiness that shall remain for that which is best for you. I pay this price and pray that at me you are not sore. I hope that you have felt the kind of love I have and for what you mean to me. For I shall always feel that stain in my heart and pray that there will be a day when you will realize my love is forevermore. This poem was written by my birth mom one month before I was born. She was 21 years old, far from home, staying in an unwed mother's facility in Florence, South Carolina, and waiting to make the biggest sacrifice of her life, giving me up for adoption. November 16th, I was born. Three days later, my birth mom blessed my parents with their first child. My life was changed forever because of the sacrifice my birth mom made. This was no mistake. This was the beginning of God's sovereignty in my life. 
My parents always told me I was adopted. Adoption was always viewed in a positive way in our family because it was how God answered my parents' prayers. When I was about two and a half, I have a home video of my mom talking to me about getting a brother or sister. It's a testimony to adoption being normalized at our home. She told me that they sent the papers off and we would wait to see if I will get a brother or sister. That was our life. Our family of four put together by God through adoption. His sovereignty. When I was about six or seven years old, adoption took on a whole other meaning for me personally. My mom was taking me to school one morning and we were at a stop sign waiting for our turn to go. And while we were waiting, we were talking about Jesus. And right there in the car, my mom led me to Christ as my Lord and Savior. That day, in the car, I became God's child. And I was now adopted into His family. God's sovereignty. And as I got into 5th and 6th grade, friends would learn that I was adopted. They would argue with me about it. They would try to tell me that I was not adopted, but I would argue back and tell them I am adopted. I was very proud of being adopted, and at a young age, I recognized that God created me in my birth mother's womb to have the temperament He wanted me to have, but to be raised in my family to give me the faith and life I have today. I knew He had a purpose for my life, and at that time, I didn't know it was God's sovereignty, but I clearly see it today. And as I got older, I began to learn more and more about what adoption was and why women made that choice. I also learned about other choices they can make. When I was in eighth grade, I was sitting at I was sitting in chapel at school. It was a Valentine's Chapel, and a young woman was sharing her testimony about how she chose to give her baby up for adoption. But she almost chose to abort the baby. When I heard her testimony, the reality of that possibility hit me hard. I remember so clearly where I was sitting, who I was sitting by, when I realized I could have been aborted. I cried and cried, but after a while I remembered I wasn't aborted and I knew that my birth mom wouldn't have made that choice. I knew that because I knew that she loved me. And that was not something that I made up trying to comfort myself. I had proof. At home, in my parents' office, there was a folder in their filing cabinet that was called Mary Beth West. So I frequently looked through that folder. Since it had my name on it, I assumed it was okay to look through it. And in that folder, it had a poem written by my birth mom. I would read it over and over and over, and I knew that she loved me so much. Listen to the words of the poem again. Confusion had filled my mind while the swelling of my heart did scar my soul from such pain to give this precious love away which I had carried, labored, and bore. Within myself I seem blind, but this darkness will soon fade. It is such emptiness that shall remain for that which is best for you I pay this price and pray that at me you are not sore. I hope that you have felt the kind of love I have and what you mean to me. For I shall always feel that stain in my heart and pray that there will be a day when you will realize my love is forevermore. I knew that she loved me, and my parents knew that she loved me. God's sovereignty once again weaving through my life. All through school, I would write papers focusing on adoption or nature versus nurture. Adoption amazed me so much, even to the point of wanting to adopt children when I got married. I was always amazed at the beauty of adoption. I would sit and wonder what ways I was similar to my birth mom but I never really wanted to seek her out. I never had that desire because I knew my parents were my parents and there was no need or desire to find her. The idea did not cross my mind until 2012. My parents knew my birth mother's name. They knew I was always looking at her poem, so they gave me the poem and they shared her name with me. Tamara Arbuckle. One morning, I searched her on Facebook and I found her and I recorded my journal entry about it. Yesterday, I think I found my birth mother. Her name is Tamara Arbuckle. She is from Illinois. I don't know if I should contact her or not. I'm glad I was adopted. Somehow, she put me up for adoption in South Carolina. She is from Illinois. 
It's amazing what God does and how He works. I'm going to pray about it, and if God is leading me to contact her, then I will. The Lord is awesome. I am glad He is in control of my life. Thank you, Lord, for being in control. I love you. God's sovereignty. While I was waiting for God's timing to reach out to her, I began to pray for her. I prayed for her almost every day. Now, I was not completely sure that it was her, but her name was so unique and her age matched up and she kind of looked like me. So I trusted God, but one huge thing I found out from her Facebook was that she was from Illinois. I had no clue that's where she was from. Talk about seeing God's sovereignty. Even more in my life, He knit me together in my mother's womb and created me to be me and then sent me all the way to Greenwood, South Carolina to be raised to know Him, love Him, and serve Him. That was when I began to clearly see God's sovereignty weaving through my life, connecting everything together. Many years had passed and I would look her up every once in a while and I found out some ways we were similar from her interests that she had on Facebook, but I never felt led to contact her. Not until 2019, seven years later, God answered my prayer and gave me the go for contacting her. Now you may be thinking, what about your parents, especially your mom? How would they feel if you contacted her? God took care of that. Sometime in 2018, my mom told me that she felt compelled to let me know that I should contact my birth mom. She couldn't tell me why she had that thought, but she knew it would be a good idea. At the time I listened to her, but I didn't act on it because I wanted to make sure it was what God wanted me to do. But God was sovereignly working to prepare hearts. February 2019, I was invited to speak to a group of women about the importance of reaching children in the community through Good News Clubs. In my message, I literally put two sentences about being adopted. I was led by God to share that really small part of my story in the message. God's sovereignty. After I finished speaking, someone came up to me and shared with me her story. She shared that when she was younger, she got pregnant and her parents made her give her child up for adoption. Then 40 years later, her daughter found her and contacted her. She shared with me that what, that was one of the best things that had ever happened to her. Then she asked me how I felt about my birth mom. I told her that I loved her so much and I was so grateful for the choice she made. Then this woman said, I encourage you to reach out to her. God's sovereignty. So I left the lunch, got in the car, and called my mom to share with her what just happened. When I saw her, when I told her about what when I told her about it, she said, I've told you this before. I really think you need to reach out to your birth mom. Again, God's sovereignty. So I went home and prayed to make sure I was truly following God. It seemed to be lining up. I found her on Facebook. I had the desire to reach out to her. I had the blessing of my mom and the encouragement from others. It had to be God saying it is time. I want to share with you my prayers to God as I asked him for wisdom on what to do. Because all these intimate details in my story reveal the warp, that continuous string of God's sovereignty in my life. Lord, as you know, at the lunch yesterday, I had a woman share her story with me. God, she told me I need to reach out to my birth mom. Lord, last year, my mom said something about that. God, please reveal to me what you would have me do. Please give me wisdom. Thank you for my birth mom. I pray that you will bless her. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for my parents. Thank you for creating me with someone else. Thank you for how your hand has been on me. Lord, thank you for my birth mother, Tamara. God bless her. God, I pray joy for her life. I thank you so much for how much she loved me. Lord, do you want me to reach out to her? Am I supposed to do that? I need wisdom, God. I pray over this and lay it at your feet. Lord, I pray for Tamara. Lord, I have not written the note yet. God, give me wisdom. I pray over her heart, and I pray that she knows you as her Lord and Savior. God, be glorified. Lord, I haven't written to my birth mother. Give me wisdom. That is going to open up a whole new door of life. Please show me what you would want me to do. I love you. 
I knew reaching out to Tamara was a huge step, not just for me, but for her as well. I wanted to make sure I diligently prayed for God to prepare her heart to receive the letter once I wrote it. Listen to what happened next. Well, Lord, I did it. God, I wrote the note to my birth mother. Lord, I pray blessings over the note. God, may you bring joy to her life. May she come close to you, God. I pray victory over the note. In Jesus' name, I pray the note will get to her. God, may you put your hand and angels on the note. Protect it. God, prepare Tamara's heart. Heavenly Father, please work. This was a very special letter I was putting into the hands of the post office to make sure it got all the way to Illinois. I was so nervous it wouldn't make it or that I'd sent it to the wrong person. I found her address on the internet and was trusting God the whole time that this was her. I wanted to make sure that she knew that it was really me. So I made a copy of the poem that she had written me and placed it in with the letter. Before I put the letter in an envelope, I snapped a photo of the letter. I knew I had to keep a copy of it because that's just who I am. I document everything. But I want to share this note with you so that you can see God's sovereignty. Hi, my name is Mary Beth. A few weeks ago, I spoke at a women's lunch and shared a small portion of my testimony. I shared with the women that I was adopted at birth. I shared about the selfless love of my birth mother. The self I shared about the selfless love my birth mother showed and the selfless love of my parents who adopted me. When the lunch was over, I had a woman come and speak to me, and she shared her story with me. She told me that when she was young, she became pregnant and gave her child up for adoption. She said that 40 years later, she was reunited with her daughter. They had both been searching for each other. She has been so blessed to now have a relationship with her daughter. She then asked me what I thought of my birth mom. I shared with her that I loved her so much and am very thankful for her. She told me that I should contact her. I thank you. I thanked her for sharing her story with me and then I left the lunch. I got in my car and called my mom and shared with her. My mom was in awe of the story and she told me that she has always loved my birth mother and was so grateful for her. My mom told me that, it, that if I felt led to contact her, then she was okay with it. I'm not 100% sure if you're her. I had very little information to use in searching. One of my most treasured pieces is a poem written my, by my birth mother. I've made a copy and put it in with this letter. If you are my birth mother, I want to thank you for all you've done for me. I know it was not easy. I can see that in the poem. I want you to know that God has had his hand upon me and has kept me safe. I would love to get to know you. You are a major part of my life, even though I have never known you. I thank you for all that you have done for me. God used you to give me life. He has blessed me beyond measure, and I would love to share those blessings with you. If you want to write me back, please send your note to my address. If you are not my birth mother, then I hope this note was a blessing and inspiration to you. Love, Mary Beth. P.S. My birth date is November 16th. God's sovereignty. March 10th, 2019, I went to the post office, dropped this letter into the mailbox. Now it was time to wait and wait and wait and wait and see what God was going to do. April 9th rolled around, basically a month later, and it came. My ply from Tamara came. I was so nervous that I opened this letter just like a child would, not very neatly, but all I was thinking was, this is it. Am I even ready for this? I opened the letter, and the first thing I saw was a picture of me when I was a baby. I was so confused. I recognized this picture. It's in our family photo albums. I had no clue how she got this picture. And then the next picture that was in here was another photo of me as a baby. And then I recognized this one. And then there was another picture that I didn't recognize. It was a photo of me with Tamara as a baby. It was my birth mom. I found my birth mom. It was really her. God had led me to the woman who made the greatest sacrifice of her life for my best interest. God's sovereignty. Listen to what she had to say in her letter. 
Hi, Mary Beth. I was so happy to hear from you. I would say that you are correct in assuming I am your birth mother. Your letter was amazing and brought joyful tears to my eyes at the same time took my breath away. When, when reading your letter, I was in disbelief that this could actually be happening. When I saw your birthday, your name, and the poem that I wrote, there was no doubt that you are her, my baby. It's really you. You found me. I don't know how, but I'm so glad you did. I would often wonder if you were looking for me or just happily going about your life. All I ever wanted for you was to be loved and happy. Even if that meant I would never know who you were. There were several times that I tried searching for you, but I really had nothing to go on. I was told that when you left the hospital with the adopted parents that they were going to call you Mary Beth. I was, that was all I knew. I have two pictures of you that Love Life Ministry sent me from your adopted parents, which I was so grateful to have received. I could tell by those photos that you were being well taken care of and loved very much. You looked beautiful. I have enclosed copies of those photos and of one photo that I have with me holding you. I would love to get to know you too. I am so glad to hear that you are doing well. And from your letters, it sounds like you are surrounded by those that truly love you. I couldn't have wanted more. I am very grateful for your parents and all that they have done for you. I want to thank them for raising you and giving you the love you deserve. I will leave it up to you as how and when you would like to connect. I'm leaving my email and phone number and I'm on Facebook as well. Thank you for finding me. I am anxiously looking forward to hearing from you. Love, Tamara. This is the part of my story where you do not have to look hard to see God's sovereignty. It's very noticeable. Only God could do this. It was real. I found her and she responded. And now it was my turn to respond. I was struck with fear. I spent three days praying and seeking what I should do. I knew that if I had reached out to her, when I reach out to her again, it would create a change in my family. It would affect all of us. Something that my mom would also have to process and be okay with because now it was real. I had to take a day off of work to seek God and spend time in His Word. And this is what He taught me. Matthew 14, 28-29 And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and he came toward Jesus. When Peter got out of the boat, his actions proved that he had faith in God's word when he heard Jesus say, Come. Is Jesus asking you to do something and you're waiting to feel safe? If so, that isn't faith. In order to do or have greater things, we are usually required to let go of what we have and head into the unknown. God told Abraham to leave his country, his home, and his relatives to go to a land that he would show him how to get to after he had started the journey. Abraham had to leave not knowing where he was going. Now that is faith. As you take steps of faith to be obedient to God, you will experience His faithfulness and your faith will become strong. Don't let fear stop you because God will never leave you nor forsake you. God's sovereignty. I was waiting to feel safe, but I knew I had to take a step of faith because God was sovereignly leading me. I could not disobey Him. So I stepped out and I emailed her. I shared with her who I am. I also talked a lot about Jesus and God and ministry because that's who I am. It took her a very long time to respond. And I'll be honest with you, I was afraid that I scared her away. I was so afraid. But finally she did respond. And shortly after that, we had our first phone call and things were moving along. Since we connected in April, I was able to tell her Happy Mother's Day for the very first time. God's sovereignty. Then in June, we made plans for me to fly out to meet her for the first time. This was a big trip. It was my first time flying alone and I chose to fly out of Atlanta. And after I booked the flight, I learned that that is the biggest airport in the world. And on top of that, I was going to meet my birth mom for the first time and spend a week with her at her home. The night before my flight, I got no sleep. I was so nervous, but I knew God was with me. 
The next morning, my family dropped me off at the airport. I waved goodbye and went inside and prayed that God would help me navigate the airport. God got me through the airport to my terminal in 40 minutes. It was like he had his hand on his back walking me through God's sovereignty. Then I got on the plane and I was able to tell my story for the first time. The lady who sat beside me asked me, why are you going to Illinois? And I told her I was going to meet my birth mom for the first time and we talked the whole time and she had tears running down her face, but she, God used her to comfort me on the plane because I was so nervous. And when we landed, she walked with me all the way up to meet Tamara. It was like God was walking me to meet her. God's sovereignty. He was with me that whole day. I don't have the words for what happened next, but I do have a video. God's sovereignty, mother and daughter reunited 30 years later. November 18th, Tamara gave me away, thinking she would never see me again. But God knew that she would see me again. He had it planned the whole time. He also gave my parents the opportunity to meet her and tell her thank you for her amazing sacrifice. God's sovereignty. The warp of God's sovereignty runs through my life. It runs through your life as well. You have to take time to look for it. You will see it. He is in control and he allows all things to happen for his glory. I want to close with a quote. Someone is praying you into their life right now. God will ordain your footsteps. <laughs>